I found myself in a situation working with the government of Alberta and some of the themes that you've touched on this morning with regard to how, um, what the public policy issue is in terms of dealing with issues, say for instance with poverty. Uh, Alberta's reputation is based on oil and gas. Having moved there, and you can appreciate the impact of poverty and vulnerability, which was what area that I was working with with early childhood development, that nine years ago the, um, a barrel of oil was $120, um, at Christmas time it was $27, and recently has gone up to around $40, hovering around there. So you can imagine the impact that that has both on government uh, revenue as well as employment uh, and outcomes for families when um, they're certainly relying on um, uh, income, very high income levels. So uh, with regard to the public policy area that I was working in, we drew on the Finland maternity package uh, as, a, an, as an example of uh, 75 years ago of a tradition where um, we had, there was a social issue around uh, infant mortality rates, eight in a thousand infant in, um, in terms of infants uh, dying at birth, uh, where a particular government policy was actually able to have an impact on a number of fronts, uh, particularly with regard to dealing with specifics of infant mortality, but also then having an impact with regard to access into prenatal programming sooner rather than later as a preventative measure to connect women into community. And this was something that I appreciated with regard to the work I was doing in terms of early childhood development because often early childhood development is identified as a strategy to actually incorporate into poverty reduction strategies because it's a way to reach the child but also to connect the family into community. And Diana, I certainly appreciate your issue in terms of researchers because often it's, it can be quite a challenge to work with researchers. So I did my own research as well. Uh, having coming from a university background in Australia. So I, I went out into the community and spent three months uh, talking to parents, uh, to mothers and fathers around vulnerability and what some of the issues were that they were encountering. And, and more often than not, what was coming up were those issues around uh, barriers of access into programs. And from a government perspective, and again, I can share with you my experience. I'm not speaking on behalf of the government of Alberta because I have left that role, but I can share with you that with regard to what some of the issues were. Uh, uh, this issue of um, income um, and what some of the um, uh, social issues that families encounter, that we actually had some very interesting data from the Early Development Instrument, which is a Canadian tool measuring children's development. It's also now being used in Australia. Some of the interesting data that was coming up for us was that, in fact, some children from uh, families within uh, communities that we had typically identified as being poor because of an SES profile, in fact, the children's development, the children are doing well. Um, and so it not, wasn't necessarily based on income. Families may have been income deprived, but in fact, the children and the families in those communities were connected, the children's development, there was um, a robust approach to care and the well-being of children. However, in some communities that we identified where we had seen uh, uh, affluence and stronger SES profile, in fact the children's development they're not doing as well. So there's some interesting theories around that in terms of the impact of um, a, um, a technology within families, um, some of the in interesting um, social economic um, profile of where uh, parents were flying in, flight out, so if a mum or a dad may be in the oil patch working uh, and then coming back into the, the family maybe once every two or three weeks uh, and not as necessarily as engaged with the family. One of the other interesting things that we were starting to encounter too was um, maternal um, uh, depression. Um, mums were very open to talking about this, the impact of having, say, that transition to parenthood. Uh, we were certainly appreciated too that we're actually starting to see in a universal health system in Canada and for Albertans that there is actually a decline in women accessing prenatal programming. And there were all sorts of reasons around that and some of them were typically identifying that it was a too, a too medical model. 
uh, that they were actually um, felt that they were walking through a hospital, getting some basic information about nutrition, and then not necessarily um, being connected into um, a support system. Uh, so these were some of the issues that were coming up and I was particularly struck too in terms of the impact of um, access and the poverty component of it in terms of the mental health and as you're saying that decline in the cognitive um, uh, facili facility, the ability to make those decisions. If you're trying to figure out how to connect into this system uh, and yet you're um, in this fog, as some of the mums were talking about, being in a fog and not being able to find a, a phone number as to how they were going to connect. So we looked at the Finland maternity package. Finland is very shy about releasing a lot of information about a data about their work. You can certainly apply to Keela, which is a social institution that has oversight for the research and you have to pay for the research and depending on what so sort of question what area of their research that you're interested in. Um, and I can certainly appreciate that because they're want, not wanting to, uh, say, reduce it to, um, say, this is about giving people a box. And I'll, and I'll speak a little bit more about that. So what we embarked on was to identify this initiative from public policy where we could actually influence uh, politicians uh, and, we, um, and just to give you a bit of social context, that would actually recently be a change in our government and quite unheard of and people are usually quite shocked when they hear this. We had had a progressive conservative government for 44 years, uh, which changed actually last year to a new government for the first time, uh, the um, New Democratic Party. So you can appreciate with the 44 year mandate, um, some of the opportunities that were in there, but we saw that the Finland maternity package actually offered us a way to look at a package and putting that forward to government. So as a result of that, we're very fortunate to receive um, um, a, um, a grant from the government um, in our area, and we embarked on engaging with our community partners. We have an initiative called Parent Link Centres, 53 Parent Link Centres, uh, funded by the government that are open to all families to access five core elements of early childhood development drop-in programs, developmental screening, uh, also um, community kitchens, reaching into 180 communities. And what we were able to do was to partner with our local um, health partners because from a government perspective too, we know that there are gaps in service delivery, but often it's not necessarily about creating more but being smart with what we actually have and revisiting what, say, may have been a public policy of standing for 10, 20 years or an investment that had been made as to why is it that we're actually investing in that area. So the hub model, which um, your panel mentioned this morning, has been a very important um, component to this, to bring those assets together uh, to actually improve and break down some of the barriers. Uh, to support parents with regard to their transition. So our focus has been on vulnerability, what that vulnerability might mean and look like. We're actually including that as part of the research, um, ongoing research, which has actually now been handed over to uh, the researchers. We are using the baby box as um, an engagement tool. And by that I mean looking back to the Finland experience, where a baby box was offered to parents who access prenatal programming in a community setting. So with partnership with health and our community uh, partners through our parent link centres, the facilitation is really important in the sense that it's not just about a box with some items in there that's given to a family, it's actually a facilitation. So the relationship becomes really important with that. We also have mentors that are connected because we know from the research that one of the ways that we can actually begin to address and break down some of those barriers is actually through community cohesion. So what does it mean to be connected in to community as you make that transition um, from uh, having a baby um, and to um, parenting and then being connected into parent resources? Some of the items in the, um, the box we look at um, as a tangible resource. So going from a safe sleep education approach to a safe sleep package. And so what we're able to do is to add 
resources in addition to promoting safe sleep, but we're also able to include some tangible resources, practical resources that families may not be able to otherwise be purchasing. But we're also including what we call evidence-based items. So for instance, we include things like a board book, and a toy and with the facilitation activity we actually then start to look at some of the research around coming out of the Harvard Center on the developing child around uh, the brain research and the core story in terms of the importance of activities and those interactions be between parent and child. So the facilitation then starts to look at those activities around improving the interactions between parent and child because underpinning this is that if we can address and improve parents' understanding of children's development, we know that we can actually impact their parenting <coughs> style. So for instance, if we know the developmental um, outcomes around, say for a two-year-old, that there, there are some parenting interactions there that can actually improve uh, a child's outcomes. So we really want to be able to focus on the evidence with regard to that. So that's a two-year research project distributing 1,500 boxes. In my work with the um, Baby Box Company, we actually now, as Chief Education Officer, because we have been inundated with partnerships in, the, in Canada, the US, the UK, as well as Australia, is to actually take the maternity, uh, the Finland maternity experience, as well as other initiatives now, to start looking at how we can actually um, partner with non um, with not NGOs, uh, hospitals, um, and universities and government agencies, particularly in the U.S. When you start to look at some of the disparities in health uh, with regard to um, infant mortality rates, but really depending on what the social issue, the, what the pub, what is it the public policy issue that we're wanting to address, and then designing an appropriate intervention. Uh, with regard to those types of outcomes. We certainly do have um, very strong partnerships now. Um, just to let you know that the box does meet, absolutely has to meet international safety requirements for a baby to actually sleep in the box. Baby can sleep in the box for six to eight months. Um, some of the items um, we, uh, as I say, is safe sleep package, mm -hmm. um, particularly in the US, um, we have partnerships in Ohio, Minnesota, Alabama, um, where we have um, significant infant mortality rates in Alabama. Just to give you an example, so for instance, infant mortality rates may be around, hovering around five to six in a thousand, but when you go to the African American community, we're looking at 15 in a thousand. Mm -hmm in terms of infant mortality rates. So you can begin to appreciate some of the health disparity issues that um, agencies are actually encountering. Um, we meet the Health Canada requirements um, to be able to import the box for manufacturing for cribs, cradles and bassinets. So it's very important that the, um, the box is actually, um, does meet international safety requirements um, and consumer standards both in Australia um, and the Australian New Zealand um, standards, as well as with um, uh, the American, the US um, consumer requirements as well. Yes, so we have two um, components, there are, we have a retail, so parents do go online and purchase the box, right. because we know that um, certainly with the cost of a layette and putting together um, those initial costs, so, so uh, parents go online, there are baby showers in communities where they do some fundraising, to actually bring boxes in to give them to families. Mm -hmm. But we stress the importance of facilitating that because it is about the relationship. So it is about focusing on adult capabilities. So whether it be uh, through an agency or a, uh, as I say, a community group who want mm -hmm. to um, include um, this particular activity um, as part of an existing program. That's the thing. This isn't about purchasing a program. It's mm -hmm. taking a tangible resource and, you, and using it effectively the way the Finns have used it in terms of as, as an engagement and a tangible resource, a cost effective into existing programs so that we're not saying that this is about reinventing or redesigning, but in fact what it actually starts to help is to integrate and bring better alignment between those programs. So for instance, our work with institutions, there'll be institutions that will come together and partner and then look at the um, bringing in the, um, the box 
um, as part of that. And as I say, adding various resources depending on what it is that they're wanting to actually address. For instance, there's a lovely program in the UK working with teen mums who are looking, um, who have been doing the, some tests with um, test of concept with the box as well, where they included a ball of wool, the knitting needles. Now, when you think of something as simple as that, the actual um, um, reasons and the impact of that are very important in terms of self-regulation for the young mums who are actually knitting. Um, and we don't take that for granted. It's deliberate and intentional the way that we work with the families to, and particularly for a mum in that situation, about the self-regulation. Um, and a lot of you have seen now with colouring books and knitting as that um, self the focus on that self-regulation and executive function, particularly for a teen mum when you look at um, executive function that's going on in terms of brain development for teens. Mm. Um, but some of the feedback was wonderful in the sense that what they were doing, because they were knitting um, little hats for their baby, so also promoting the bonding for, um, with mm. their baby. Some of the mums actually went back to their communities, to their grandmothers, and they wanted to show their grandmothers and get some advice from grandparent mothers about knitting, and the grandmothers actually got involved and wanted to knit hats and clothing for the children as well. So you start to see that there can be that impact to connect back to their families um, to help in terms of the bonding. So it can really be anything you set out for it to be. Um, I think that's one of the um, things that we've found has had quite an impact. So for instance, while infant mortality rates weren't necessarily the issue for the particular work I've been doing, we certainly do have some of those issues within our First Nations and Aboriginal communities in Canada, uh, as well as, as I say, trying to, you know, th when you think about a universal health system, uh, wanting to actually break down some of the barriers of access, that we're actually seeing a decline in women accessing prenatal program, which is not a good thing.